Joyce. Let's attend you with this one because communities around the Val Dam are bracing for more floods as 12 sluice gates are opened. Some residents, in fact, have already been evacuated. The dam exceeded maximum capacity after heavy rains in the area. ENCS Mangoba Mkunu is monitoring the situation on the ground and joins us now. Uh, Mangoba, very good morning to you, sir. I mean, obviously, just a little bit earlier on, we were reporting about the impact that we've had as a result of this uh, serious torrential rainfall as well as a subsequent flooding. But just talk to us a, a little bit about what the community in the Val is experiencing and also just the extent of damage that we're facing here. Well, certainly, Faith, uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, the impact uh, of uh, the flooding that happened here uh, yesterday. I'm just going to step out of shot, uh, Faith, and just show you what's happening uh, just behind me here. This is one of the roads here in the Val area that has been uh, destroyed. It has been washed away by the flood waters, the gushing flush flood waters that we saw here yesterday. We understand that uh, the bridge uh, here has, uh, you know, been washed away and structures or parts of it have actually collapsed, as you can see here also on the sides. These are just some of the palisades from the roads that were also swept away by that current. It was a strong current, uh, Faith, that we saw here. And in fact, uh, we were here on the ground uh, when the water started to increase rapidly. I think it was just a matter of uh, minutes, Faith, uh, when, uh, you know, we were knee-deep in the water. And then the next thing, uh, the current had just increased and it was uh, heavy. Uh, you know, people had to be evacuated. There was a lot of panic on the ground. There was a lot of anxiety on the ground. There were people People that uh, you know had gone to the shops uh, and uh, they couldn't even come back uh, to their own houses because of the flooding that happened uh, here in this community and of course many of them uh, had to evacuate their homes they had to try and find alternative accommodation uh, but we also saw houses are uh, being submerged faith in the water itself uh, I think yesterday accounted about uh, eight houses that I just saw in this stretch of a river which uh, uh, is the rich Strait river uh, uh, which connects to the Val River. It's one of the tributaries uh, that uh, connects with the Val uh, River. And uh, I can tell you, Faith, that it was uh, utter scenes of devastation. And uh, that is what we're seeing here, the impact and the aftermath of the flooding that occurred here. Many of uh, the community members that we saw yesterday here were outside trying to assist those that were trying to salvage their belongings, that were trying uh, to take some of their uh, furniture out of the houses. Uh, but many others had to be rescued. We saw that dramatic rescue that took place here yesterday where uh, a woman was uh, uh, rescued out of a container which she had been seeking refuge in uh, because of the rising flood waters. A helicopter from the police had to come and divers had to assist as far as that is concerned but also there were other people uh, a family that was also rescued from their house. Uh, we also heard reports of uh, a driver that was rescued from a car so that just gives you a sense of how bad the situation is. Of course things are much calmer today. Uh, the water is much uh, lower today, but of course uh, the worst is not yet over. We know those sluice gates are still open, 12 of them at the Val Dam, but I just want to bring in one of the gentlemen here from the Val Reaction Unit. He has been here throughout the night. He was here even yesterday, uh, just assisting uh, with people uh, that, uh, you know, had been uh, trying to salvage their belongings. He was also here to ensure that the stretch of road is closed and motorists uh, don't come to the stretch of road. Uh, if I could just get uh, you, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, just explain to us. I mean, the devastation that we're seeing here this morning. If I can ask you to stand this side, please, sir. Uh, the devastation that we're seeing here. How bad is the situation? The situation is really bad. There's a lot of houses that's been damaged. Uh, the water came down. It was merely 15 minutes, and then the water was onto the houses, in the houses. The the bridge, uh, it held up to around about half an hour, and then the bridge collapsed. The water took it away. We were standing here because there's a lot of people you can't see really in the rain and stuff. So we had to block off the road. But it's not really uh, from our guys. There was a lot. It's most the community and everybody standing together to help each other. And that we thank everybody to not sitting in their homes and stuff and come and help. Because like we know, there's not much resources to come and help. So, yeah, we're here to help. We um, just want to know... Uh, if they can make a plan to fix the bridge here, because this bridge is very busy here. It's, it's a road between two uh, places, and yeah, it needs to be fixed, and it needs to be fixed properly, and it needs to be done, in my accordance, very urgently.
you were here on the ground yesterday. In fact, I think we left you here on the ground. You were active on the ground. Uh, you were helping as far as evacuations are concerned. How many people have been affected, according to your knowledge, uh, people that have been displaced, people that have had uh, to move out or be evacuated out of their homes? Uh, last night, only on my phone, I had calls around about, say, 39 people that need housing and so. Uh, this morning I drove around and see there's a lot of people that helped us with guest houses and stuff to put the people in. Even people phoning us and tells, listen, yeah, we've got the room open and stuff. This morning I'm just waiting for all the people to come around here and say to go back to their houses to see what's there. Uh, like there's a lot of stuff, personal stuff that's been uh, missing. So we're busy uh, seeing what we can get together to go give to the guys so that they can uh, maybe go on for a day or two to see what we can help with. But where is the municipality in all of this? Because, uh, I mean, we haven't seen uh, or heard anything uh, from Mfuleni municipality as uh, far as, uh, you know, the plan, the disaster plan and assistance is concerned. Are you hearing anything on the ground as far as what's happening? Uh, we spoke. Uh, yesterday I spoke to uh, Sabran from Freedom Front Plus. He was here. He phoned the people to come this side. I didn't see them yet. This morning that guy from that was the vest from Mfuleni, where the vest there, he was the first one that came here. And like you heard, he said he's going to give uh, the meaning of him to the other people and then uh, we will see what's happening. So... As we speak now, there are still families that are displaced. As we speak now, there are still houses that have been destroyed. A lot of houses that's been destroyed, a lot of families. So, yeah, we, some of our people just want to get rest. Uh, like uh, people from Lokval, they helped us a lot. Lokval community, uh, RGR, uh, all those people, they're helping a lot. So, yeah, we're going to see now, we're going to move in now to see what we can do and where we can help again. Because, yeah, it's devastating to see somebody's stuff uh, going down the stream, eh? Okay. Yeah, it's not very nice. Okay. Thank you very much for speaking to uh, Stani. Uh, well, he was here on the ground faith. He was quite active. The community members uh, came together to assist those that are trapped, uh, to evacuate those that are in their houses. I just want to show you uh, this side, the houses, this side. These were some of the houses, uh, faith, that had been underwater yesterday. Uh, some of them were submerged, uh, and you could only see the roof structure of these houses under the water. And just give you a sense of how uh, the waters have come down. Uh, uh, you know, today uh, compared to what we saw yesterday. But of course, uh, many residents uh, this morning are picking up the pieces. Mop up operations are continuing. But of course, there's still that fear uh, that uh, the flooding could uh, return, uh, given that uh, the sluice gates are still open. So the community is still on tenterhooks as far as the situation is concerned. There was also a flooding in Stenerton yesterday, uh, and there are fears that uh, that flooding could also affect the Val water uh, or the Val dam levels, and uh, that could also just. Uh, uh, probably escalate the situation but as far as uh, things are concerned it's residents that have been displaced it's houses that have been destroyed infrastructure road infrastructure has been destroyed and of course Mangoba, no sign of the municipality as yet Not at all, Faith. Uh, in fact, uh, even yesterday, I had uh, communicated uh, with the municipality just to try and find out what the plan is. Uh, you know, I spoke to several officials from the municipality and, uh, you know, there was nobody who could come and, uh, you know, give us an interview or speak to us as far as what their response is, as far as what their plan is. Uh, but we know that uh, Run Water has been, uh, you know, giving some of those uh, notices, uh, warning people uh, in some of the areas. So they were posting on social media, and that's how many of the people were then evacuated. Uh, but as far as the municipality is concerned, the only official we've seen from Mfuleni municipality is uh, one of the officials from the traffic department was coming here this morning to assess the situation. We've sent countless messages to the municipality, but uh, we haven't had anybody on the ground to come and assist. And when you speak to many of these community members, they'll tell you that there hasn't been any communication that they've received from M. Fuleni municipality as far as, uh, you know, um, evacuations are concerned and as far as, you know, places where those that have been displaced are going uh, to be accommodated. So it doesn't seem like uh, there have been much here on the ground. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of community 
committee members that, uh, that are here, some of the groups, uh, including security groups uh, that have been assisting here on the ground. But I can tell you that um, uh, the municipality has not been seen. In fact, even, uh, you know, the Department of Water and Sanitation have also been, uh, you know, sending warnings to community members. They've said that uh, they've activated their flood preparedness plan due uh, to the fact that uh, the Val Dam had uh, reached its capacity. They issued warnings to communities around the Val, more especially those who are, uh, you know, stationed next to the flood uh, waters or the Val River uh, and other tributaries, uh, so to speak. And they're also uh, saying that they're expecting this flooding. Of course, they are hoping that, uh, you know, infrastructure could be protected. But this just gives you a sense, Faith, uh, of just how violent and how, uh, you know, uh, volatile the situation was yesterday uh, the destruction that we're seeing here this morning tells a tale of just how bad that flood was yesterday sure. but of course the municipality still not here on the ground i definitely hear you on that one Manuel, Mkuna, much appreciated as always for that report just giving us the latest on the impact of those floods in the vals quite shameful actually to see that uh, nothing yet from the municipality the local municipality at a time when actually communities need them